Okay, today we're going to be looking at multiplication fluency. We're going to be focusing on the numbers between 1 and 10. If you get the numbers between 1 and 10 sorted, then you should be able to use Napier's method, which I've covered in a past video, to do any of future multiplications, okay? So there's a few, few things we want to talk about to begin with. Um, firstly, and this is kind of a a way of thinking about multiplication. Okay, Lots of students, when you go up to them and you ask them, or they ask you what a multiplication, the answer to a multiplication is, they're just seeing it as a fact. Okay, Now, it is true that, I don't know, 4 times 5 is 20, but they forget there's always a root there. Okay, It's something you can work out. It's not just a list of facts to remember. It's something you can work out. Okay, So even if you don't know off the top of your head what something two numbers multiplied together are, there's a root to getting to the answer. Okay, That's how you need to think. Okay, it's not a list of facts, okay, it's a, or not just a list of facts, it's a list of facts, but you can work towards the answers, okay? Lots of students, they see it's just a list of facts, and if they know it, they know it, if they don't, they don't, they forget that it's something you can still work out, okay? So at its core, never forget that we use 4 times 5 as an example. Um, this can be thought of in a few ways, it could be think, thought of as um, 5 lots of 4, so 4, add 4, add 4. 4, add 4. Uh, there could be roots to working this out if you know 4 times, times in something by 4 is the same as doubling and doubling again. Okay, so there's a few different roots. So, do, 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 do. And we'll look at each of these uh, separately. Also, you've got your 5 there, you could look at it as times in by 10 and halving. Right, so I'm going to look at the a grid of all the numbers from 1 to 10 multiply together and then we'll look at how we can go about memorizing the important ones and from them important ones how we can work out all the others okay so here is the grid um, of uh, all of our multi multiples we have one two three all the way up to ten and all the way down to ten so if i wanted to work out say five times four like i've just done you do five times four to get twenty okay so you just look up the two numbers your times are together and then you can see where they are. This is a way you can remember them. Um, obviously, this grid is huge, and I wouldn't recommend remembering all. Right then. So the first thing, when you look at all these numbers, you think, oh, I've got to memorize all of these. You can cut this almost straight away in half. If you recognize that multiplication is commutative, okay? So we'll keep using 4 times 5. We know that 4 times 5 is equal to 5 times 4. Okay, so if we're doing 4 times 5, we've got 4, four times 5. We can see 20 here. And if we do 4 times 5, 20 here, okay? So we only really need to remember both of these calculations because if we can work out 4 times 5, then we can work out 5 times 4, okay? So straight away, we can forget about half of this. I'll do some scribbling out. Let's do that uh, just along here. Okay, so providing you have a route to working out half of these, you can always work out the other half. So you don't even have to worry about this half here, because if you know, for instance, 2 times 1, then you already know the uh, corresponding over multiplication. Right then, my next tip for memorising all of these would be to memorise your square numbers. Okay, What do I mean by square numbers? Um, do a quick example here, we can write 1 squared is the same as 1 multiplied by 1, which equals 1. 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2, which equals 4. Okay, On your multiplication grid, you will see these numbers appearing here. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 6, 5 times 5 is 25, then we've got 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. These are really useful to know, and they're very applicable in future um, in the future of your maths, especially for GCSE, okay? So, step number one would be memorize your square numbers. Okay, and then we'll look at how we can memorize the other, um, multiplications. Okay, so just looking at these, there should be a few um, multiplication tables that are really, really straightforward for you to work out. Um, so straight away, you should know that 1 times anything is itself. 
So you don't really have to learn this. As long as you learn that fact, then that means you already know all of this. Okay, so once you know one times anything is itself, and you know your square numbers, you've already got most of the way there. Okay, equally, uh, you should be able to see here that 10 times something is always quite easy to, um, to work out. All you're doing is you're moving your decimal place. So if you're doing 1 times 10, you're moving this decimal place one more to the right, which means uh, that 1 will go up to become a 10. That follows for all of these. Okay, so we're soon narrowing it down, okay? The hardest thing you've had to memorise so far is your square numbers. Okay, there should be a couple more that are straightforward for you to memorise. Um, if you're able to double, you should be happy with your two times table. So that's these covered. Anything doubled, that's sorted. Okay, another one to look at is your five times table, I'd say that's a fairly straightforward one to know. If you're able to times by 10 and able to halve, then you work out your five times table. Even if you're not able to memorize these, don't forget you can just count up, like you can count up in fives. You could do your five, 10, 15, 20. Make sure you're counting as you go so you do not lose track of where you are in your multiplications, okay? So you should know these five, five times one, five times two, five times three, times four, times five, times six, times seven, times eight, times nine, and times 10. These should all be fairly straightforward, okay? So we should be getting, hopefully, left with just the ones that you find a bit more difficult. Let me do the rest of them. Right. So we know our ones, we know our tens, we know our twos, and we know our fives. And we already know the exact same on this side because of the symmetry. They're the same. And we also know our square numbers. Okay, this isn't leaving many left to work out. Now this is where you need to use a little bit of working, a little bit of extra working, okay? I'll show you how I'd go about these. Let me grab a, another pen quickly. So, if you were to memorise the ones I have highlighted so far, that will save you a lot of time. Um, let me grab this one. Okay, now, this just comes down to understanding what multiplication is now, okay? If we've memorised these facts, we've memorised pretty much, well, a whole load of them. So now let's have a look at one that we haven't covered yet, okay? Now some of these you will already know. Let's have a look at some of our nine times tables, should we? Let's do nine times four. Okay, so nine times four here we can see is 36. I'll just put a box around it so we can see where we're looking at. Okay, now my suggested route to this is if we know 10 times anything, then we can work backwards to work out what nine times anything is. Okay, so for instance, we, we were looking at nine times four. So I know 10 times four is 40. Well, to get back to here, all we have to do is take away four, okay, whatever number we're times in by. And we can follow this if we did it nine times three. Well, we know 10 times three is 30. We could take away three to get to 27. Okay, so knowing that trick means you can always work out something that is one away from multiplication that you will already know. Okay, so for instance, we know all of our tens. Okay, so we can work out all of our nines. Okay, we just have to take away whatever number it is um, that we're multiplying nine by from our ten times that. Okay, so I'm going to do this one in a slightly different colour because it does take one step of working out. Okay, that's all of our nines. And don't forget, we've already memorised nine times nine. So we can work from here as well. Right, we could do exactly the same with, uh, let's do six. If we know, for instance, uh, we're trying to work out three times six. Don't forget, we could just do six, add six, add six. Or we could look at, well, what's five times three? That's 15. Let's add another three. Okay, because we're times in by three, and that'll give us 18. Okay, so we can work out all of our six times table by looking at our five times table and then adding one, okay? So we can get all these ones that are next to our five times table. Okay, and you should hopefully see now that all of the numbers we have are next to a times table we know. For instance, three times four, well, that's next to our two times table. So if I know 
2 times 4. I can add an extra uh, 4 to that and I'll get 12. If I wanted to work out um, 8 times 3, well, I know 2 times 8 is 16. Add an extra 8 is 24. Okay, so we can work out these. Uh, let's leave that 28 unlocked. If we were looking for um, 7 times 4, well, I know 7 times 5 is, 20, is 35. So I could work backwards. I could take away a 7 to get 7 times 4 is 28. Okay. So my suggestion is, and we can do the same for this. Rather than think of this as a list of facts, remember your easiest ones, your twos, your fives, your tens. I mean, you can, you can memorize your threes. It's not that taxing. And then just think there's always a route from one you know to one that you don't know. OK. Don't be one of them students that when you're asked or when you have to do a multiplication, you just stand there, sit there blankly thinking, I don't know what that is. OK, you can work it out. It's. It's a, it's a fact that you can work out. OK, that's the mindset you need to get in to be fluent with your multiplication. OK, and I say applying this knowledge with Napier's method means you can do any multiplication of uh, two numbers.